Welcome back to another reading and correcting with me, Kendar, the Tiger Rights, and Ty, the Tiger Supervisor. These are where I read a chapter from one of my books and correct it as I go. If you want to listen to these live, it's every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time on Twitch. And if you want to support me, that is on my Patreon. Today we are doing chapter 33 of A Series of Death. Tremborg drove through Bolofen's neighborhood, having to force himself to respect the speed limit. He wanted to be at the precinct, clearing up whatever was going on with his brother, but Herolex had called him again to tell him, the inf tell him enforcers were driving him and his ensign to their house. The houses were newer construction with large lots Newer constructions. Large lot. You, you know what? Large lots with bushes and trees and flowers. A few parks dotted the area. Where he had to leave the car since the area surrounding Bo's house didn't allow them. A measure in place to ensure the cubs' safety. That then keep enforcers from parking their cars directly in front of the house. They were here because of a crime, so local ordinances weren't important right now. One car wasn't an enforcer vehicle. If an R.I. was present, that meant a body. Sir, a slim bear said from behind the cordon that blocked the street before his brother's. Ah, uh, before his brother's house. This is an active in investigation scene. You, Trevor showed him his ID as he slipped under the cordon and didn't stop to hear the enforcer's protest. He spotted the two young lions he'd been searching for by an enforcer vehicle. As he hurried to join them, he saw Isa Ufen uh, and the lion walked toward him, hands up placatingly. Before you, stare, before you claw me apart, they were gone from the academy when I got there. One of the advisors told me enforcers picked them up. A relax called me. Trimber walked past the lion, eyes fixed on the enforcer positioning. Eyes fixed on the enforcer, positioning himself in front of the car to block the path to his nephews. Why are they still here? They won't let me take them take them home, Ufanaz answered. Did you threaten to eat him? Tremor demanded, making sure the young jackal could hear him. Ufan shrugged, still hugging his leg. Tremor forced himself to slow and bit back his annoyance. He had to remember that while Ufen was a decent hunter, if he had to be, he'd been raised in a family where the females took care of the problems was what made him a good a good match for Betel. His sister took after Serene. He stopped walking well into the jackal's personal space. The officer tried backing up, but he put it, the car at his back. Sir, this is an investigation site. You have to move to the other side of the perimeter. Trimber smiled, showing teeth. I don't have to do anything but listen to you explain why my nephews are here. I'm sorry, sir, they are... He growled, leaning in. They're my family. I can smell how scared they are. Do you even know what's going on? We can't tell. Trevor poked the jackal hard enough. It didn't matter if he used... If he did... It didn't matter. It didn't matter that he didn't use a claw. The enforcer flinched at the touch. They're cubs, not criminals. Now, I'm going to make sure they're okay. I can't... You can. Trevor's smile became nasty. Your only other option is to end up as tonight's meal. The jackal swallowed and gave him a quick nod. Trevor smirked as he walked around the car. Too inexperienced to remember the procedures when being threatened was to call for reinforcement. Uncle Trevor, his ensign called, running to him. Aralex looked torn between being stoic and giving in to his fear. A female yak stepped out of another car and headed toward them as his nephew hugged him tightly. Trevor felt more than saw Ufen stand back. She was older, more confident than a jackal. He wouldn't be able to threaten her. Sir, she said, stopping a few steps away, can I ask you who you are and what you're doing here? R.I. Golden Mane. R.I. Golden Mane. He showed her his ID. I'm their uncle. Why are they, why are they here? 
They're both under predation age. Eredex opened his mouth to protest. Opened his mouth to protest. Tarbor suspected, but he looked at the yak and closed it. Their family might consider him an adult, but he still had a year to go before the law did, too. We were following the investigating R.I.'s order. That confirmed the body was involved. Trevor tried to remember whose territory Bo lived in. He checked when his brother moved in, but it wouldn't come to him. Still, it was irresponsible for them to force cubs here. There was no way they could think they were involved. But as much as he wanted to just take his nephews and leave, he had no power here. Can we talk? He asked the yak, nodding to a position away from the car while moving Essenson toward Aralex. I can't leave them unsupervised. I'm not asking you to leave, Trevor replied, barely keeping his tone civil, just for us to move away so we can talk without being overheard. Aralex is a responsible male. He won't go anywhere. He looked at his nephew, who nodded, and wrapped an ar arm around his brother. Ufen joined them. The yak moved half a dozen pace away. Make it quick. What is going on here? He demanded, lowering his voice. I know the body isn't my brother because he's on his way to a precinct and he wouldn't kill someone without paying their tax, no matter how tight his budget is right now. She shook her head and spoke even more softly than Trimber had. That's not it. The body is under predation age. Trimber stared at her, having difficulty processing what she said. A what? He asked loudly enough that his nephews and Ufen looked at him. He lowered his voice. But wouldn't do that. My brother is experienced enough he wouldn't stalk someone under predation age by mistake. He certainly wouldn't do it on purpose. I can only tell you what I know, she replied, and that's that the body on the house is under predation age. Then she stepped away as a mink in an expensive suit stepped out of the house. A pleased expression on her face. Slate coat. Right. That was whose territory this was. Trimper hadn't in interacted with her much, ever. Uh, even while every R.I. in the city hunted Roxol, but he knew her reputation, ruthless in her stalking of tax evaders, uncaring of the pain and damage she left in her wake. She had no problem using her power as an R.I. to get things done. As a result, she had one of the best place closure record and the highest numbers of complaints. He stood next to his nephew by the time she arrived. Well, hello there, cubs, she said, her voice honey sweet and purposefully ignoring Trevor. Isenson puffed out his chest. I'm not a cob, I'm twelve. The outburst surprised her, and Trimber couldn't help smiling. You're under predation age, she said, regaining her footing. That makes you two that makes the two of you cubs, no matter what you want to believe. Now, tell me what your father did here. Isenson's confidence Isenson's confidence vanished under her authoritative tone. He looked from Aralex, where his expression to Trembor, who was doing his best to keep it neutral. Aralex was old enough to know what the presence of an R.I. here meant. His son might not. Trevor didn't talk too much about what he did with the cubs, but he could pick up the sense of the tension caused. The, the scent the tension caused. Come on, she said, annoyed. You two staying silent isn't going to help your father. She smiled. You do want to help him, don't you? That's enough, Trevor stated, barely keeping from snarling. He'd prefer Hufen defended them. It would remove the professional rivalry, but if the lion hadn't been able to stand up to a young male enforcer, he couldn't expect him to do so with a female who had official power. Go on, Golden Mane, this isn't your territory, she said without looking at him. But they are my family. You can't question underage cubs without proper representation. You know that, Garmine. She looked at Ufen and dismissed him. Well, since you're here, she told Trembor, you can represent them. She fixed her gaze on Herolex. Now, you tell me about the body in the house and think about what you're about to tell me carefully. I can push for complicity despite your age. Fuck, this is over, Trimper said. I'm not done questioning them. You just said I'm representing them, and as as their representative as their appointed representative, I'm telling you this joke of a, is over. I can't believe anyone lets you treat people this way, let alone cubs. She fixed him with a glare. This is my territory. I'm going to investigate any way I want. And the day you have my closing record, you can come talk to me about how I do my job, not before. I'm not saying shit about your skills. 
he replied, deciding not to point out the number of complaints she had against her compared to his. I'm telling you, my nephews are off limit. They were at the academy, so there's no way they know what took place in the house. She rolled her eyes, her ears folding back, telling Trevor that until now her anger was an act. I'm not done, she stated. Until that happens, no one's going anywhere. She pointed into the to the house. It's a don't, Trevor growled. Her eyes moindered. Are you telling me you're contesting the body's age? You have to know about it. It's with your earning annoying habit of people get of getting people to talk to you. She eyed the yak who kept her distance. I'm telling you, this isn't something to be talked about in front of cubs, witnesses. Then you hear me? They were at the academy, for fuck's sake. As instance gasp made Trimber close his muzzle before he unleashed any more profanity on her. Aerolinks didn't look happy, but whether it was at the situation or the swearing, Trimber couldn't tell. Sleek Coke looked amused. That's only valid if the body arrived at the house after they left, isn't it? And I won't know that until I've questioned them. Trimber held his desire to strangle her in check. With her record, he probably couldn't afford her. But it was more about giving his nephews the right example. Killing was about feeding yourself, not removing people who annoyed you. She made that difficult, with her smirking. Fine, Trevor said. Then you aren't going to find that out today. I'm refusing to represent them, which means you can't question them. Her smirk vanished, only to reappear as she looked at Ufen. What about you? You're a lion. Are you related to those two? Stay quiet, Ufen, Trevor ordered as the lion was about to answer. The only thing that got him to obey was that the inst what, the instruction from family took precedence over that of strangers, even females, in position of power. But Ufen looked like he wanted to be anywhere but here. So, he is related to them. Good. He can represent them. He can represent them if you won't. No, he won't. Alex said. Uh, Trember said, eyes fixed on Ufen, who fidgeted in place, but stayed quiet. You want a family member to represent them? I'm going to get you one took out his pad. Who are you calling? She asked, suspicious. Their grandfather. Why him? Trevor smiled. Because he's a lawyer. She ground her teeth, her expression dark. Does your silence mean you want me to call? Or would you prefer not to have someone who can document the ways in which you're breaking the laws, questioning them? Her glare was the only answer she gave, which was good. If she'd called us bluff, he wasn't sure how he would have pay, played out how it would have played out. Torim would have come without hesitation, and but being retired meant he no longer had the authority he want, he once did in the courts. How about we do this? he said. Tomorrow you can go to the academy and question them under the supervision of their advisors. They have training in representing cubs in situations like these, but they have no legal power, so you so they don't won't be able to nitpick you to death. Trevor was going to call the academy to ensure they had a lawyer present, because if he, because he didn't trust Slico to be on her best behavior otherwise. Torim would help with that, too. Fine, she snapped. Take them out of here. I'm done. Trevor ignored the tone and motioned for his nephew to join him, then led them away from her, Ufen in tow. I'm sorry. The lion said, I know I shouldn't have been willing to answer her, that I should have done more to get them out of there earlier, but the enforcer, he trailed away, and she's, he sighed, slumping. Not like you, he finally said. It's okay, Ophan. This isn't on you, it's on her. She had no business ordering them out of the academy. She had no legal grounds to do it. He looked at Erelex. What did your advisor say when he took you out of class? Something happened to Dad, and that someone needed to ask us about it. Trevor looked at Isenson, wondering what to say, but his nephew would find out soon enough. Anyway, I take it you didn't say. I take it you didn't see. You already knew he'd been arrested. Erlich shook his head. Is that okay? Isenson asked, a slim amount of hope in his voice. He paid for the body, right? He isn't okay right now, Trevor replied. But I'm going to make sure he will be okay. Whatever this is, your dad didn't do it. There was no way Bo would do something like this, which meant he was being set up. Why anyone would do it escaped him, but considering who his brothers was associating with recently, he had no problem figuring out who had done it. Regardless of Bo saying, things had, with them had been resolved. 
He needed to find a way to talk with his brother before Slickcoat got to him and forced him to admit to doing this. Unfortunately, the easiest way was the one he couldn't use. Putting Torum in the same room as Bo right now wasn't a good idea. Do you want me to take them to your dad's? Ufen asked. Can we go with you, Uncle Trembor? Sinson asked, putting a lot of eagerness in his question. He wanted to say no. He'd have too much to to do trying to figure out how, how to talk with Bo and figuring out he'd, how he'd get himself out how he'd get him out of this mess. But the hope is in the, in the hope in his nephew's eyes broke his resolve. All right, but only for tonight. My house isn't set up for nephews to stay there. Tomorrow you're going to your grandparents. Okay. All right. His answer replied, putting as much dejection in the response as he put eagerness in the question. Aralex can to the ears proclaim his irritation at his brother's antic, but he stayed quiet. He had better he was better at not showing his stress, but his scent told Trembor he was scared. This was one of those things the Academy couldn't prepare a cub for, and which Trembor wished they'd never had to experience. But life wasn't kind, and now it was his job to make sure they went back to normal. Things went back to normal. And this concludes chapter 33 <clears throat> of A Series of Death. If you are enjoying this, please leave a like. If you want to know when the next chapter is going to be subscribe, going to be up, subscribe and hit the bell. If you want to read the book, as well as the others in the series, they are available at all major e-retailers. If you want a different way to support me, that is on my Patreon, where you can also get access to just about everything else I've written. And if you want to listen to these live, it's every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time on Twitch. The links are in the notes, and with that, I shall wish you a good day.